suggests that two computers must follow for a connection to get established between the two of them. So if I want to establish a connection with you, step one is I will send you a SYN packet. Step two is that you will send me a SYN ACK packet. Step three is that I will send you an ACK packet. So these are the three steps that take place, a three-way TCP IP handshake that must take place for us to establish a TCP IP connection with each other. Now it turns out that it is actually possible to exploit or misuse this three-step uh, TCP IP handshake between two computers to execute a DOS attack. And do that DOS attack is something known as a SYN flooding attack. In a SYN flooding attack, the attacker will create infinite instances of half-open connections by sending infinite connection requests from spoofed IP addresses. Now, according to TCP IP rules, whenever a computer or a system receives a SYN packet, it must keep track of that connection for at least 75 seconds. So essentially what you're doing is that if I keep sending you a SYN packet, for every SYN packet that I send to you, your computer has to allocate a certain amount of memory to that connection. So if I send you a connection request, your computer has to assign a certain amount of memory to that. Now, if I keep sending you connection requests, your computer will have to keep assigning some additional memory to that connection request. And that memory is assigned at least for 75 seconds. After which, if it's not a valid connection, then it'll get, uh, you know, the memory will get freed. So if I keep sending you connection requests at a rate that is faster than the rate at which the old connection request, the memory is getting freed up, then what will happen is, at some point of time, all the memory that is available on your computer will get clogged, will get used, will get choked. And your computer will no longer be able to handle any new additional connection requests, which is what a SYN flooding attack is all about. So there are three main steps in a SYN flooding attack. Step number one, the attacker has to send SYN packets to the victim. And these SYN packets, which are connection request packets, have to be sent from spoofed IP addresses. Step two, what will happen is, the target computer, the victim computer, has to reply to the SYN packet with a SYN ACK packet. And the SYN ACK packet will not be sent to me or the attacker. It will be sent to the spoofed IP address that I had used when I send the SYN packet to the victim. Now what will happen is, since the reply is going to the spoofed IP address, the attacker obviously will never reply to the target. Now the reply that the target sent in step 2, that is a SYN ACK packet to the spoofed IP address, it will keep searching the internet for the spoofed IP address. And the trick is that you have to choose an IP address that is not online, it is offline. So the SYN ACK packet reply that the target computer has sent in step 2, that those packets will keep searching the internet for the uh, for the spoofed IP and eventually there will be a timer that will take place. Right? So the target is kind of out of commission and cannot accept any new connection request until one of the old connection requests get timed out. So that is the funda behind the SYN flooding attack you keep sending infinite connection requests or you keep sending infinite SYN packets from spoofed IP addresses in such a way that in step two, the reply that the victim will send will be of SYN ACK packet, but the reply will not be to you. It will be to the spoofed IP address. So the SYN ACK packets will keep searching the internet, trying to reach the spoofed uh, IP, but spoofed IP is actually an offline computer. And eventually, there will be a timeout that will take place. As a result, the idea is that you will keep sending infinite connection requests at a rate faster than the rate at which the timeout takes place. As a result, at some point of time, all the memory of the victim's computer gets clogged, gets used up, gets choked. As a result, the victim is no longer able to accept any new connections.
Now the spoofed IP address that you use in a sin flooding attack, there could be three scenarios, right? The spoofed IP address that we use, either it does not exist at all, which is great because then what will happen is the SYN AC can reply that the victim sends back. It will keep searching the internet trying to find the spoofed IP address. But the spoofed IP address does not exist at all, which is great. So eventually a timer will take place. So ideally, that's what you should try to aim for. The second scenario is that the spoofed IP address actually exists. That's not a good case because as soon as the SYN ACK reply reaches a spoofed IP address, the spoofed IP address will send back a reset error message or reset packet saying that why are you sending me a SYN ACK packet? I never sent you a SYN packet. So connection cancel, connection reset. So the memory allocated on the victim's computer will get freed up. So that's not the best case scenario. The third scenario is that the spoofed IP address is a system within the victim network. Again, that's ideally not the best scenario. So you should try to use, or whenever you're executing a SYN flooding attack, try to do it in such a way that the spoofed IP address that you use is actually an IP address of a computer that is not online, that is not connected to the internet, that does not really exist. Now, another type of DOS attack would be an application-specific DOS attack. Instead of attacking the entire system, it is possible for a criminal to attack a particular application or a specific application that is running on the victim's computer. For example, the criminal can DOS attack maybe just the FTP software, the HTTP web server, or the SQL server that is running on the victim's computer by misusing or exploiting some kind of uh, you know, loophole that exists on it. So we will be seeing a couple of demonstrations of application specific DOS attacks later on as well. All right, so we have seen what, we have kind of understood what exactly is a DOS attack. We have seen examples of DOS attacks as well. I think it is time for us to now see or learn how to actually execute a DOS attack. So what kind of software do you need if you want to execute a DOS attack? And how do you actually execute a DOS attack? See, essentially, a DOS attack is executed by creating data packets and sending those data packets to the victim's computer, right? So if I am a criminal and if I want to crash your computer, I need a packet generation software on my computer and the packet generation software will allow me to generate new data packets or create new data packets which I can then send to you and as I'm sending you the new data packets, I can actually crash your computer. So that is what uh, is required if you want to execute a DOS attack against the victim's computer. Now, very good packet generation software is a software called NPing. NPing. NPing is actually uh, a software or a tool that comes built within NMAP. So if you download the latest version of NMAP, Nmap will come with Nping pre-installed or built in. So Nping is a great uh, you know packet generation tool. You can it allows you to create specific types of data packets which you can then send to the victim and wait for a response. So not only can Nping may be used for say OS detection or network reconnaissance kind of things, but it can also be used for a DOS attack. However, there is a much easier software available, much simpler software available. Uh, it's called Cola Soft Packet Builder. Cola Soft Packet Builder is basically a packet generation software which allows you to create data packets and send them to the victim and you keep sending the data packets to the victim until you're able to crash the victim's computer. So at this point of time, I would like to give to all of you a live demonstration of a DOS attack. And I'm going to execute a DOS attack against the Talent Edge network that I'm currently connected to. So let us see how you can do that. So essentially you need only a packet generation software running on your computer for you to be able to execute a DOS attack. So let me quickly open up the Colasoft Packet Builder Colasoft Packet Builder software on my computer.
Just give me a minute while I look for it. So this is what the Kolasov packet builder software looks like. So essentially for any kind of DOS attack, you could execute it using this particular software, which is basically a packet generator or a packet builder. Now, to show you the strength of this particular software, I'm also going to use a data sniffer. So let me write it down. There are two types of software I'm going to show you today. One is a packet generator. What does a packet generator do? It allows you to build or create or generate your own data packets. Right? The second type of software is a data sniffer, which allows you to record all data packets being sent or received on your network. So using a packet generator software, you can create your own data packets and send it to somebody else. And then using a data sniffer software, you can record the uh, data packets being sent or received on a network. So since, since here in this demonstration, I'm going to execute a DOS attack against the local network that I'm connected to right now. I'm going to use a data sniffer to show you what it kind of looks like. Because otherwise, how will you visualize a DOS attack, right? Now, the name of a data sniffer which I like to show to all of you today is the Wireshark data sniffer. Wireshark data sniffer. Alright, so let's quickly first of all open up the packet generator software on my computer. So if all of you look at the screen, this is what the packet generator software looks like. First of all, you got to click on adapter to select the adapter that you are using to connect to the internet. Right, So you may be connected to the internet using Wi-Fi, using Ethernet, or so on, right? So I'm going to, I'm right now connected to the internet using Ethernet cable or LAN cable. I'm going to select the Ethernet option. Right? So it says operational and this is my IP and this is my gateway and so on. Right? So I click my, I click on OK. So the first step was you got to select the adapter that you're using to connect to the internet. Next is on the right hand side, where you are seeing 18 different data packets that I am going to highlight. These are the data packets that you are going to send to the victim's computer. Right? So these are the data packets that you have created that you are planning to send to the victim's computer. On the left hand side are the different fields of the data packet. So let me actually create a new data packet and show you how to change the various fields. So to create a new data packet, let me click on the insert button or add button. So as soon as you click on insert or add, it will ask you what kind of data packet would you like to choose. So I'm going to select TCP packet and click on OK. So a new data packet has been created. So now, I can actually change the various fields of that data packet by just modifying uh, the various fields on the left hand side uh, window. So, say for example, if you want to spoof a data packet and send it from somebody else's IP address, then in this left hand side window, under the IP field or the IP category or internet protocol category, there is a field which says source IP. And source IP you can change to any IP address of your choice. So if you want a DOS attack from somebody else's IP, then you can change the IP to whatever you want over here. Next, in the destination IP field, you got to type in the IP address of the victim computer. So it could be 192.168.0.1. That's the victim that I want to choose. Then you can select the port number that you want to send the data packets to. 
So it could be port 80 or it could be some other port of your choice. Uh, I'm sorry, the source port and then the destination port. Right? So you could change that to whatever you want. If you would like to change the MAC address, even that is possible. So if you scroll up to Ethernet, you can type in the destination MAC address. You can type in the source MAC address as well. So it's completely up to you. Now to send a specific type of data packet, you got to go to the flags option. So under flags, there are various options. You have synchronize, you have reset, push, acknowledgement, urgent, and so on. So... I want to say if I want to send a SYN packet, I will change 0 to 1 in front of SYN. So now it becomes a SYN packet. Now let's assume I want to send a reset packet. Then everything is 0 except in front of reset, I type 1. So depending on the type of data packet you wish to send, you need to modify the flags accordingly. If you remember, we had learned flags in the port scanning class where I uh, discuss the meaning of each flag that is possible. So once you have created data packet, a data packet like this, you can create as many data packets as you want. So all the data packets get queued up here on the right hand side window. So when you are ready to send the data packets or when you are ready to start the attack, click on send all, send all. And then I'm going to select burst mode, which is an option which says no delay between consecutive data packets. And I can loop the sending as well. If you want an infinite loop, then type 0. And then select the delay that you want between consecutive loops. I don't want any delay, so I will type 0 milliseconds. So now, to start the attack, all I need to do is press the start button. Obviously, in this particular demonstration, we don't really want to cause harm to the victim network. So I'm just sending some dummy data packets, just so that you understand how it is done. But uh, in reality, you may need to you know, customize the data packets according to the type of DOS attack that you're trying to execute. Alright, so before I click on the start button, let us open up the Wireshark data sniffer. Because otherwise, we will not be able to visually see the DOS attack. Wireshark will actually record all data packets being sent or received on this talent edge network that I am currently connected to. So let me quickly open up uh, Wireshark. I click on this open button, which is the left top corner button, which essentially will show me all the interfaces that are currently available on my computer. So right now I'm connected to the internet using the Ethernet uh, port. So I click on start next to the Ethernet port. So if you notice right now I'm not sending any data packets, but already I'm able to record all the data packets being sent or received on this network currently with that I'm connected to. And I'm connected to the Talent Edge network. So whatever data packets are being sent or received on the Talent Edge network are currently visible. So I can click on particular data packets and see more information about them. So if somebody is visiting some website, I will be able to sh uh, see that over here. Unless it's, if it's an HTTPS connection, when, in which case I will not be able to see what, what's going on. Right? So keep looking at the screen. We are able to record some kind of interesting data. You can click on it and get more information about each and every data packet that is being sent. Right, so that's what a data sniffer does. Now I'll request all of you to look at the first column. What is the first column? So if you notice, uh, Feroz. Feroz PC is there. Sunita PC is showing up. So if you look very carefully, everything is moving very quickly, Milroy PC, but you are able to see names of people who are on, on the Talent Edge network currently. It could be other employees, other team members that are there that I have not, not met, but I am able to see the names in this particular software. 
so ganesh somebody called ganesh is connecting and things like that anyway so that that is something that we can discuss later on but right now look at the f- uh, first column the leftmost column it basically represents the number of data packets that are currently being recorded or being sent or received on the talent edge network and right now we are at 1400 data packets 1400 data packets so that is the first column so let me now use the packet builder to execute a dos attack so it's what 1400 data packets i click on start in the packet builder software and in a matter of a few seconds it has sent a few thousand data packets to the victim's computer so if i go back to wireshark we were at 1400 data packets and now if you look at wireshark we are at around 90000 data packets now we are at 100000 data packets so in a matter of a few seconds we have sent now it now we are at 130000 data packets so in less than a minute from 1400 data packets on the talent edge network we are close to 150000 data packets that are currently there on the talent edge network before we cause actual damage to the network let me go ahead and stop the attack so in less than a minute we probably we have sent 222000 data packets on the talent edge network so that is what a dos attack is all about essentially every network has limited bandwidth every network is used to a certain amount of traffic because bandwidth is very expensive so whenever a company or an it administrator is buying bandwidth they usually buy a little bit more than what they require but in case of a dos attack like this one where now we are at 250000 data packets in maybe a couple of minutes since we started the attack all the bandwidth available to the victim network gets used up gets choked gets clogged so if regular users right now they open up the browser and if they try to connect to google.com there may be some error obviously right now nothing would have happened because the talent edge bandwidth is pretty large but if i continue this attack for maybe 1 hour maybe 2 hours maybe 5 hours then what will happen is all the bandwidth that is available to the network may get choked may get clogged and then if there is a uh, you know user who opens a browser tries to connect to google.com it will say not found because there is no bandwidth for that request to leave the user's computer to connect to google.com because all the bandwidth available to the network got uh, you know choked clogged because of this dos attack that we executed so the idea behind a dos attack is very simple you just clog the victim network with infinite amounts of data so that even regular users are no longer able to access the internet are no longer able to execute a uh, regular internet requests so let me go in and stop wireshark as well so that is how we can execute a dos attack and like we had discussed earlier there are variety of different types of dos attacks available and all you need is a packet generation software like colasoft packet builder or you had nping which comes with nmap which allows you to execute a dos attack another software that allows you to execute a dos attack which we have seen earlier is actually metasploit metasploit is fabulous <laughs> we have seen that metasploit has hundreds of different modules that you can use and each module allows you to execute a particular type of attack or a particular type of query so metasploit has something known as a sin flooding module which allows you to execute the sin flooding attack that we have discussed earlier against the victim's computer so in a sin flood what happens i'll quickly recap the attacker sends infinite number of sin packets or new connection requests to the victim's computer and the victim's computer